Hi everyone, it's Mr. Vallejo and welcome to biology class. Uh, today we are going to take a look at the most simple animal, which is the sponge. Sponges are in the phylum periphera and that's what today's talk is about. So let's take a look at the PowerPoint. I'm gonna share my slides with you. And then we'll get started. All right, just a reminder for you to take Cornell notes. Um, remember to put your main notes in this big section right there. The Cornell questions go right here. And your summary at the bottom should say something like, in this lecture, comma, I learned. And then tell us what you learned. All right, so uh, this is again the phylum periphera, periphera. Now, the term periphera comes from a Latin for pores, okay? And a, the, the body of the, <clears throat> of the sponge has thousands and thousands of microscopic pores um, where the water goes in, and then you can see the water goes out and manal, uh, sometimes at the top, uh, but that's, uh, uh, it creates a one-way flow of water through the sponge. Right, sponges are for the most part marine organisms. Now, remember the term marine means that it lives in the ocean. Um, there are some similar terms. Aquatic means it lives in the water and fresh water means it lives in lakes and rivers and streams, not the ocean. Sponges are for the most part, marine organisms. They're also asymmetrical, which means that you can't cut their body in half and get two equal halves. Um, their shape is irregular, so um, they are asymmetrical. Um, we are symmetrical, so if you uh, cut a, uh, <clears throat> a human down right down the middle, you would have two equal halves, those are called that type of symmetry is called bilateral symmetry. And so we'll be taking a look at the three different types of symmetry in the animal kingdom. The sponges are asymmetrical, we are bilateral. Um, and then we see some other organisms like the starfish or sea star um, more properly. And this sea anemone as uh, pictured here are have radial symmetry. Now back to sponges, sponges are sessile. Sessile means that they are stuck in one place. So because they're sessile, they have to have a specialized means of feeding. So these guys are filter feeder and they can, they can take, uh, some sponges can take uh, about uh, six liters of water and pass it through their bodies in a minute. So um, because, they're, because they are stuck in one place, because they are attached to an object, because they're sessile, they need to uh, be able to process a lot of water um, and uh, filter out the organic substances that they can eat, though they're called filter feeders. <coughs> All right, now we take a look at the basic structure of the sponge, we see that, um, from a cellular point of view, there are four types of cells. The first cell is called the pore cell or the porocyte, and it creates the, the pore um, in the body of the sponge. The next cell is called the collar cell or troanocyte, and a collar cell uh, has a little cuff to it, and you can see it in this picture right here, it has a, has a collar like my shirt has a collar. Now in that collar gets stuck food. Um, and, uh, and so tyrannocytes are, are where the food is, is uh, captured. You also coming from the tyrannocyte is, is uh, this tail, this flagellum, which creates the, as it beats back and forth, the water flows only in through the pore site and then it goes out through the, through the osculum right there. The third type of cell is called the epithelial cell. And the epithelial cell, just like in your cell, um, and just like in your body, uh, makes up the outside of the, um, of the organism, they're for protection. And then the amoeboids, those are the green ones in this picture here. And the amoeboid cells, what they do is they, they go over, and they can move within the body. They go over to the choanocyte, pick up some food, 
and then deliver it to the other cells, like the epithelial cells, like the porocytes. So that's what the amoeboids do. Um, you see in this picture that there are some uh, things here that look like a Mercedes-Benz symbol without the circle around it with three points. Uh, those are called spicules. The spicules can be made up of uh, calcium carbonate, which is the chemical that makes up shells in, in the mollusca, or they can be made of the chemical silica, which is how we make glass. So these guys are called the glass sponges, and these guys right here, they have spicules made of calcium carbonate. Those are called the carbonate sponges. <clears throat> Some sponges don't have um, spicules, instead they have spongin, and you can see by the name, uh, this is a protein, um, and this is a protein found in sponges. So it's a protein called spongin, which is the same thing as these little spicules. The spicules are like little tiny hard fragments, but there, there's so many of them that it helps hold up the, the uh, structure of the, of the sponge while it's in the ocean. Well, the spongin does that too. Spongin is not, not hard. It, the protein is not hard, but it is a strong chemical that will hold the uh, sponge together. <clears throat> now, as far as reproduction goes, these guys are asexual. Um, parts can fall off and then grow into a new sponge. It's called fragmentation. But also, they can form gemmules. The gemmule is a specialized cell that has some amoeboid cells in it. And uh, those uh, go off, and uh, most of those don't do anything. But the gemmules that land in a more favorable condition can grow into a new sponge. So it's almost like a, an escape pod um, that goes out and uh, uh, ensures that the, the sponge uh, in one form will, will live on. Sponges can also reproduce sexually. Um, they are monoecious. Um, another term for monoecious that's hermaphroditic means the same thing. Monoecious uh, is a uh, if you look at the word mono means one, and ishes has to do with house. So mono ishes or manishes means that you have, um, one house, monishes. Um, so you have both male and female in one house. Uh, the term dyishes for comparison uh, means two houses. So you have males separate from females. So humans are dioecious because they're separate males and separate females. So sponges though, are monoecious. A monoecious organism has both male and female sex organs. Um, and uh, these guys don't even have organs, but these guys can make sperm and egg and uh, reproduce uh, with the uh, fertilization of, of the eggs by, by sperm. Okay. So um, let's finish this up and go back over to, uh, let's see. Oh, all right. Um, here's a, a video that you can watch. It's been add to your, to your lecture notes today. Um, you can do that on your own and uh, finish up your Cornell notes. That would be great. Okay. All right. Thanks for watching this short lecture on on Periphera and uh, have a great day. I'm Mr. Vallejo. See you later.